Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 18th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In case you had some issues connecting to the Internet Storm Center website this morning for a change wasn't a problem with our web servers, but appears that the Cisco Talus block list had our URL listed as malicious. This was resolved sort of early afternoon. So after that, everything should have been cleared up. Not clear why the URL made it on to this block list, but apparently some piece of malware also reached out uh, to the Internet Storm Center website. I was looking on virus total and found uh, one piece of malware that just had a URL listed within its code, but didn't actually connect to it. This can be a technique to actually do force URLs like the Internet Storm Centers onto block list. And yep, that may have been just what happened. And thanks, of course, to everybody who reached out to us as well as to Cisco for having this resolved reasonably quickly. In late last week, Apache released an update for Struts 2 that you should probably take serious. There are two vulnerabilities that are of interest that are being patched here. Now, the one that's the one that I'm most concerned about is CVE 2019-0230. This is a forced double object graph navigation language evaluation vulnerability or OGNL for short for object graph navigation language. The problem with this vulnerability is that it may in some circumstances lead to remote code execution. Part of the problem here is struts, but part of the problem is also how people use struts. According to the guidance given by struts, developers should avoid using raw expression language and they should use struts tags instead. So whether or not you're vulnerable or whether this problem is exploitable for your struts application really depends on the code that you are running, which makes it a little bit tricky to sort of figure out how severe this problem is in your environment. Definitely something you should not ignore. A proof of concept exploit for this vulnerability has already been released. So I would think that particularly more targeted attacks, you may already already see some probing for this vulnerability. And well, sometimes defenders get lucky and the bad guys are making mistake. Binary defense found a pretty interesting vulnerability in a version of Emotet that was first released last February. Last February, Emotet sort of did a complete code overhaul. And one thing they changed was how Emotet would detect uh, if it was already installed and which file name it would install under. It would use a registry key for this. Now, we have seen this before where you could essentially just set up a registry key which would then prevent malware from getting installed. Emotet wanted to be a little bit more fancy, so they randomized this uh, registry key. And the way they did it is they actually used the volume serial number as a key. The first version of a kill switch for this uh, version of Emotec just set the key and set its value to null. This in itself didn't initially block Emotet from running, but it did prevent it from installing itself because due to the null value for the registry key, it used a file name of .exe, which, well, it didn't work in Windows because, of course, dot being the current directory. So, yes, it wrote itself to a file called .exe, but was then unable to execute that file. 
So initially, not bad, but also far from ideal. Shortly after this particular kill switch started to get deployed by binary defense, they also found that this entire functionality of setting up this registry key actually suffered from a buffer overflow. And the great thing about triggering the buffer overflow is that it will also create crash locks and then you get events, event ID, 1000 and 1001, which of course could be used to identify infected machines for further analysis. Binary Defense then released a PowerShell script that was distributed among trusted partners of Binary Defense to inoculate systems from this version of Emotet. Well, of course, the reason why Binary Defense is now coming forward explaining all of this is that eventually Emotet fixed the vulnerability. So sadly, this particular trick no longer works. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And of course, as usual, if you like this podcast, please tell your friends about it. Post on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever your social media platform of choice is. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.